going to post this last night uh, once I once I got home, but I just got too tired from uh, no, from running around uh, town, so I'm doing this uh, now. Now, currently I'm out of town, so I'm nowhere near where I usually uh, post my YouTube videos, so that's why the background uh, looks a little bit different. But I ended up uh, seeing Halloween Kills last night. I posted two reactions uh, to it, one before I went to see the movie and one right after I left uh, the theater. So here's my like complete thoughts on it. And unlike what I said uh, during my leaving the theater uh, video, there will be spoilers for this one. So just to start off, uh, I thought the acting uh, was all right. Uh, it wasn't like Oscar worthy or anything, but for what they were trying uh, to do, I think the filmmakers and the cast, they did a pretty good job. Um, uh, Lori was sidelined, which I think, nah, I'm pretty sure that everybody here yeah, knew about that. Um, it, it was kind of like Halloween 2, where she was in the hospital for the entire movie. Except unlike Halloween 2, like, Lori wasn't part of any of the action at all. Uh, that one, uh, that one officer from the from the previous movie, Officer Hawkins, uh, he survived, even though I'm, I'm pretty sure that not only did the doctor stab him multiple times in the neck, but he also got ran over by the police car that the doctor and Allison and Michael were in, in the previous movie. I'm gonna have to rewatch that, but I'm pretty sure that Hawkins should have died in that film. Uh... The, uh, the kills themselves were incredibly brutal and awesome. Because uh, let's be honest, the only reason why I went uh, to see the movie was for uh, was for the body count. Uh, I <laughs> I will shamelessly admit that, and the uh, the movie delivered it in spades. Like you got Michael stabbing people with those fluorescent uh, lights and filling up the uh, the inner tube. Of it, um, you got Michael treating like pretty much everyone like their pin cushions. Uh, he's using these electrical buzz saws against uh, firefighters uh, in the opening. If if I could if I had to sum this movie up, or at least from Michael's side, um, it's it it would basically be like Doom. But if Michael Myers was the Doom Slayer here, like even at the end when um, when that mob descends on him and you're, and just starts kicking the crap out of him, and you think he's almost dead, but then one now uh, one of uh, the one of the mob members uh, makes the mistake of getting too close to him. I think that was Lee Brackett. Uh, where he gets a little bit too close uh, to Myers, and Michael just jumps right back up and just slaughters everybody. Like that scene, <laughs> that scene was great in showing that like, you can't stop the boogeyman. Uh, and then speaking of like people like uh, Brackett, it was nice to see all these oh, all these characters from the original film come back. Like. Again, you got Lee Brackett, the father of Annie, who returns. Uh, you got Tommy Doyle, of course, and you got Lindsay Wallace. Uh, you even had the, you even had like the doctor from the original film, the, the one that's with Loomis in the car, where uh, Michael smashes that window and then steals the car when she escapes. So you got all these uh, cool legacy characters back. And it's really cool to see them all. It's really cool to see them all interact with each other, even um, even Cameron Elam's father Lonnie, um, who I didn't I didn't even realize that he was the bully 
in the original movie. Uh, he comes uh, back in a really big way. And, like, they're all trying to finally kill Michael Myers. Uh, but then, um, but unfortunately, on, on the other side of this whole thing, uh, and this is where the spoilers come in, Michael slaughters nearly every single one of those characters. Like, he kills Brackett, he kills Tommy Doyle with his own baseball bat, no less. Uh, he, and he brutalizes, um, that doctor lady. Um... And he kills uh, Lonnie, so that's pretty much every single. That's pretty much every single uh, one of the legacy characters that are dead, except for Lindsay. She, she uh, gets to live, although she's. Um, I can't remember like just how serious her injuries were, but she was placed in a wheelchair and then carted off for the rest of the movie. So, they killed off most of the legacy characters. And that's really one of the only things I didn't really like about the movie, because why, why would you bring back all these legacy kind of characters just to kill them off? I get that it's like a slasher movie that a bunch of people got to die. But again, why, why bring back all these characters just for one movie and then kill them off? It's kind of like what Star Wars did with Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, and by extent, Princess Leia. Now, if if all those legacy characters had appeared in Halloween 2018, then I guess I could have understood it if they then got killed off in Halloween Kills, just to like actually raise the stakes. But for here, like we haven't we haven't seen these characters for technically 40 years because the timeline is now. Halloween 1978, Halloween 2018, and Halloween Kills. So by then, <laughs> but uh, by then I don't think people have that big of a connection with the characters. I could be wrong on that, but it just doesn't make sense on why you would bring back all of these fan favorite characters just for one movie. What else? What else? Uh, the score was uh, nice. Uh, not as good as the 2018 film, in my opinion, but I think it served. Uh, I think it served uh, that movie well. Uh, there, there was this social commentary about uh, like having a mob mentality and what it does to people, and I. I think they fairly portrayed uh, both sides pretty well, cause like you have you have one side that um, that they believe that the police are inadequate and that the system has failed time and again with capturing Michael Myers, which well they have like all all they've done is just lock him up. Like there there's a flashback scene where like Officer Hawkins stopped Loomis from killing Michael. So I totally get that side where uh, where the police are just inept in like finally ending Michael Myers. But then on the other side, but then on the other side of uh, the issue, the movie also goes out of its way to show us like what that kind of mob mentality can do to people, where. Where there was this subplot about how uh, Michael Myers wasn't the only escaped patient from Smith's Grove. Like, there was this guy who looked a little bit chubby with, like, this long hair going down his uh, face. He, uh, he kind of reminded uh, me of, like, uh, Danny DeVito's Penguin, to be honest, if not a little bit taller. And when he gets to the hospital... Uh, everybody thinks that he's Michael Myers, so they start chasing after him. And, uh, oh, no, uh, Karen's the only one who actually yeah, sees that, like, he's not Michael. So she tries to, 
lock him in this like hallway or something um, so that the mob can't get to him but that doesn't work and the and the mental patient ends up uh, the mental patient actually ends up smashing a window and falling to his death and I thought that was a uh, I think that was a pretty good uh, way in just um, like showing what happens if a mob goes too far because I nah, I think I remember in an interview that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis tried to connect the mob mentality in this film to like current world politics and whether or not I agree with that stance um, I am glad that uh, that wasn't all just one-sided in this film because like there uh, there was a darker uh, side to like these people who wanted to take out Michael Myers because they ended up uh, killing the wrong person or at least driving the wrong person into committing suicide uh, although I will admit as a little nitpick that um, that I think that Karen was completely wrong when she started talking about how uh, they killed an innocent man like the the patient sure he wasn't Michael Myers but he was also from Smith's Grove and I'm going out on a limb that that guy wasn't completely innocent so the guy the guy wasn't Michael Myers but uh, he also wasn't an innocent man And then, like, one, uh, one other uh, nitpick that I had was um, when Cameron and Allison actually go to the Michael Myers house. Um, and then, uh, first of all, they split uh, They split up, which was a stupid move. Like, pr I'm, I'm getting a little bit tired of every single horror film just having uh, the victims make incredibly stupid decisions even in the context of a horror movie like going off and splitting up or getting too close uh, to the killer with a knife but these two high school kids they decided to search separate floors or at least I think it was separate floors by themselves and that leads to Cameron getting killed off and Allison getting crippled basically but back to that little nitpick, uh, I couldn't help but laugh when, uh, when Cameron is like just going up the steps and through the hallway, he's just, um, he's just holding his uh, gun kind of like how John Wick is in his movies, <laughs> like it's completely diagonal. Uh, and then, and then a little bit later, right after he kills uh, Cameron. Allison is basically taunting uh, Michael into killing her by just chanting at him to, like, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know what that was trying to achieve unless if uh, she was talking to Karen, who swoops in at the last minute and stabs him with the pitchfork. Because as far, uh, as far as I know, Allison didn't know that Karen was there. So, sorry to say, but you are not Frank uh, Castle where you can just call somebody's bluff. And you, and even if you were, you wouldn't be calling Michael's uh, bluff on that kind of thing anyway. Because it was made clear in the movie itself that, like, it's not even about Lori. Like, she was never the target. Michael just likes killing people. So that and that whole thing was funny. And speaking of speaking of uh, the victims making stupid decisions, uh, I feel like um, a lot of this stuff, uh, like a lot of the kills that Michael uh, that Michael performed, it felt like a lot of them kind of relied on luck, like a gun jamming, or like Cameron getting distracted by seeing his dead dad when Michael is just a few feet away from him, like, hiding in a closet, and, 
like just seconds ago, Cameron had his gun trained on that very same closet. So I don't know if like Michael actually planned that or if it just went down to luck of just blood dripping down from the ceiling. And earlier in the movie, uh, there were these two characters. They were a married couple. They were dressed up as a nurse and a doctor. Uh, they were with Lindsay and the doctor from the first film. Where, <laughs> where, the, where the nurse... Uh, she chastised her husband for, like, never shooting this, like, really huge, I want to say Desert Eagle gun, but I'm I'm not entirely yeah, sure. But, ba no, but basically, uh, she was chastising her husband for having never shot a Desert Eagle before, so she takes the gun. But then when Michael kills the doctor and her husband, she suddenly appears, starts shooting the Desert Eagle... And she misses every single shot at what I, I'm thinking was about point-blank range or very close to it. <laughs> Until she gets too close, like everybody else, and Michael freaking kicks the door uh, out at her. That makes, that makes uh, her gun hand turn right around and shoot herself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> that kill just made me and a lot of people in the audience just laugh out loud because that's something I'd expect to see in, like, John Wick or, like, a different action movie. Not in, uh, not in a movie like Halloween. Now, granted, earlier in the film, he did, like, grab, uh, grab somebody's uh, arms and force, like, an electrical buzzsaw, like, back into their eyes but like that one he actually kind of had like an active like it, he actually used his physical strength uh, to do that with the one where the doctor or nurse uh, shoots herself in the face that one felt like it came down to luck to be honest <laughs> uh. and speaking and speaking of uh things that I laughed out loud at, um, I, nah, I burst out laughing with how the film ended, because holy cow, the, the ending was just so abrupt, like, then, like, Karen is just looking out of Michael's, uh, room, which, um, Officer Hawkins did say in a previous scene that, um, that Michael would always be staring outside his sister's bedroom uh, window. And I think that was trying to say, like, that's really all Michael wanted to do. Uh, I don't know. I always uh, saw it as, like, well, this was his way of, like, premeditating Judas. Uh, Drew Sorry. I always saw it as his way of premeditating his sister's murder from the first film. So, at the very end of the, of the film, like, they, they think they killed uh, Michael, but then he gets back up, he he slaughters all of uh, the mob, including Tommy. Uh, then he somehow makes it back to his house where there's cops everywhere. Uh, he climbs up the stairs where Karen's at. She's looking out of Judith's uh, bedroom window, and then he straight up kills her. And then it just cuts to credits. Well, that, that's one of the most abrupt endings I've ever seen in a movie. Like, he... Like, he, he just kills... He kills Karen, he stabs her a bunch of times with some quick editing. And then credits. End of the movie. So, that, that made me laugh. Although... Speaking of the whole thing with the bedroom window, uh, beca uh, so because Karen died, or maybe she's uh, going to live in Halloween uh, ends, we don't know. I mean, Officer Hawkins lived uh, through uh, Halloween 2018, so maybe Karen's gonna survive. But if Karen does die, 
from those wounds in Halloween Kills, then what was the point of her looking out of Judith's window? Because I, I personally thought that, like, that was supposed to, like, symbolize that somebody is going to become like Michael. Like, uh, like during that scene where that one Smith's Grove inmate, uh, he offed himself, uh, Tommy or someone, he, he outright says that, like, because of, like, their fear of Michael Myers, like, they're becoming monsters, too, because they drove a man to suicide. And I thought that, uh, uh, that always told me that one of the main themes of the, of, uh, the film was that, um, was that, like, what fear can do uh, to people, that, like, it can turn people cruel. It's, um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like what Alfred said in Batman v Superman. Like, that's how it starts. The fear and the rage, it turns, like, good men cruel. And, like, that's what happened in Halloween Kills. Like, but, uh, they, again, they, they drove someone, uh, to suicide during one scene because they were so afraid that that guy was Michael Myers. Although, I do think that that was pretty stupid that everybody thought he was Michael Myers because, like, the dude's physique was nothing like Myers. Like, Michael Myers, uh, was kind of like, uh, bulky, stocky, however, however you want to call it. Meanwhile, like, the other inmate was, like, kind of fat like, uh, again, he looked like Danny DeVito's penguin, just a little bit taller. But... So the ending uh, was way too abrupt for me, and then just cut to the credits. Um, from what I looked up, there wasn't a post-credit scene, which I'm... Uh, these days, like, you can never know because, you know, the MCU exists now. But, uh, but that's really it for my thoughts on Halloween Kills itself. Now, I did have a theory that, um, well, I didn't, I actually had a couple theories about uh, the movie when it was first announced that one, after I heard that Tommy Doyle was coming back, um, uh, I originally thought of that that Allison was actually going to have an argument with Lori and Karen about stopping Michael Myers and, like, they don't want her to go out and hunt him after, like, what just happened in the 2018 movie. So she goes behind her backs and, like, actually works with Tommy and everybody else. And I'll... And I'm a little bit pleased uh, to say that I was right about that. Like, she didn't really talk with Lori, but she did go behind her mother's back to hunt down Michael Myers. So that, uh, that was neat. And then there was this, <laughs> well, that was this kind of hope that I had that at now, by the end of the film, Michael will have turned the entire town of Haddonfield into a ghost town. And but I'll be honest, that, those were way too high of expectations uh, for me. Uh, according to a review, he did pull in about three dozen uh, kills in the body count, but he did not slaughter the entire town, which, I'll, I'll be honest, I kind of wish would happen. Because, I, no, I think it'll be uh, kind of poetic if the series ended like this, where Michael just slaughters the entire town, and he actually ends up killing Lori, but Lori also manages to kill him. And that would kind of, like, ultimately end the whole, um, the whole threat of Michael Myers. But by doing so, would also end the town of Haddonfield and end Laurie Strode. But I guess I should have uh, known that, uh, that expectation was way too high, especially for this movie. Uh, so, now that I got those out of the way, um... There, there's not a lot that I, and I can really speculate about Halloween ends. Uh, I, I do think that scene where Karen was looking out of Judith's bedroom on a window, um, 
I personally think uh, that that should have uh, been Allison, because I've seen uh, I've seen all these different theories that like Allison would uh, could become the new Michael Myers as opposed to the new Lori, and I'm not entirely opposed uh, to that idea, because um, back during the Rob Zombie remakes and even the original movies. Uh, you've had these characters, like, suffer severe PTSD from Michael Myers, and the whole, and because of that, they actually turned to killing themselves. Well, sorry, that came, that came out wrong. They, uh, because of the PTSD, they turned to killing people themselves. Like, um, at the end of Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, uh, there was that little tease of Jamie Lloyd uh, going out and killing, uh, uh, going out and killing her babysitter or something. I I don't know. I haven't actually seen the film. I just know that there was a tease where Jamie Lloyd was supposed to be the new killer, except that got retconned in the fifth movie. And then there was that, and then there was like the second Rob Zombie remake, where where Laurie Strode suffered severe PTSD. It was basically the driving force of the entire film uh, until, like, she finally snapped at the end, where, depending on which version of the film you've seen, uh, she actually kills Michael herself, or, or, like, she just watches him die, and then she tries to kill Loomis... But they no, they never actually went forward with those ideas, and if and if uh, this new trilogy is like set on like revisiting these old concepts from the previous films, like the first one, uh, Halloween twenty eighteen, like that no, they they tried to work in the whole PTSD angle, especially with the character of Laurie Strode. Uh, whereas the second movie. They revisited uh, this idea from multiple of the previous films about, like, that mob mentality and just finally having enough of Michael Myers. So I think it would make sense for, like, Halloween Ends to have someone finally snapping and becoming, like, the new serial killer, like, with or without Michael's inclusion. And... Well, I'm just holding out that, like, that Allison that no, would become the new killer, because, well, as opposed to what they said in Halloween Kills, like, that, uh, that would be Michael's, like, ultimate masterpiece. Like, basically turning Laurie's flesh and blood into a monster like him. Or except it would have been until... Uh, until, like, Officer Hawkins straight up said that it isn't about Lori. But... Oh, uh, right, uh, right before uh, I end this uh, video, there are two things uh, that I did like, though, in the film. So the first one is that, like, they actually... They actually showed Michael being smart with what he does, like, um, they actually explained away quickly how he escaped Lori's house. Like, he hid in that little gun safe that she had in the basement. Uh, and that's how he didn't get, like, severely burnt or dead. So it's not like he just walked through the flames. Because at the end of the day, like, he, he really is a man. Like, a really strong, durable man, but he's still a man at, uh, at the end of the film. But that was nice how they, how they actually showed him, like, being somewhat smart in this. Like, he was smart enough to evade uh, the, he was smart enough to evade the cops. He was smart enough to evade uh, the mob for most of the film, until Karen finally ripped off his mask and led him away. Uh, he was smart enough to, like, position bodies everywhere. Um, and... Well, he was smart enough to, like, put Lonnie Elam, like, up in the ceiling so that the blood would drip down onto Cameron's hands and distract him for a bit. So I guess that sort of uh, does away with uh, with a nitpick I made earlier in this video. Um, 
And then the other uh, and then the other cool thing that I liked was there were a couple instances in the movie like they didn't, they weren't uh, a lot I think it was only three times where they actually showed a first person perspective and I I really uh, like and I really liked uh, that because like I've uh, I've done that before in my own videos uh, before like uh, the firefighters. Like, they, uh, they, like, showed the camera as if you were looking through one of the firefighters' uh, eyes. And you could see Michael, like, killing uh, his buddies. You could see Michael, like, forcing the, forcing, like, a pickaxe into his eyes and shattering the, uh, the, the face shield, I think it's called. Like, it... I'm I'm pretty sure that if that if I watched it in 3D, like that <laughs> that uh, that scene will have taken full advantage of uh, that aspect. And then later in the movie, when that Smiths Grove inmate, uh, when he jumps off uh, the building and falls to his death, it's also shot in the first person perspective where you can actually see through the guy's eyes as he's falling all the way down to the ground and then goes splat. And I uh, and I just love those uh, scenes, like, because again I've done that kind of thing before. Uh, and I know uh, I also really like that, like it was shot from the victim's uh, perspective. Like not once do you see through Michael Myers's eyes in this film, and th this is the hill that I will gladly die on. I do not like the opening scene of the 1978 Halloween film for, like, basically having a see-through Michael's uh, perspective. And I get that, 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 like, they were supposed to raise the shock value when it's finally revealed that he's just a six-year-old boy. But, in my opinion, if you, sh if you shoot the camera through the killer's eyes... That makes it less scary because that means you're the killer. Like there, there is no danger whatsoever. So, and uh, and the way and the way I will have, uh, the way I will have uh, changed that would be like, um, would be shooting uh, like different angles where the camera is pointed upward, uh, like at Michael's uh, form, so that like you never actually get a sense just how tall he is. So you don't really know if he's, like, a kid or an adult or anything until, like, he goes outside and the parents rip his mask off. And then then, and then that's when you realize, like, oh, he's only six years old. But that little rant aside, um, the first-person uh, POV shots were fantastic. I really wish uh, they did more of that uh, throughout the film, like, um, like, with that one old couple that gets brutally murdered, like, if, if you could see through one of the victim's eyes as, um, as Michael's turning someone into a pincushion, meanwhile, the character that you're seeing through is steadily bleeding out from the neck, that, that would have been awesome. But that uh, that's all I got on time for the day. Uh, this video went a lot longer than I thought. So those are my thoughts uh, on Halloween Kills. What are your guys's? You like it? You hate it? Uh, if you like the video, just make sure kind of to click like, subscribe, and comment down below what uh, your favorite scene in the movie was. And I will catch you guys uh, in the next one.